what's up everybody welcome back to my youtube channel and um, yeah my today's video is about a year late because uh, i'm going to be reviewing the prime x570 pro from asus their uh, amd ryzen motherboard for the amd ryzen 3000 series cpus and uh, i just had it uh, on my uh, shelf here my store shelf my shelves here and i thought why not make a review while i still can right because uh, a lot of people still might, you know, choose this motherboard when buying a uh, motherboard for an AMD Ryzen 3000 series CPU, right? Uh, so this is going to be my quick little review here, so hope you enjoy it. Not gonna go really in-depth, uh, but I'm still gonna cover it uh, pretty well, I hope. Anyway, first of all, the board is for AMD Ryzen CPUs that, you know, support the brand new PCI Express 4.0. Uh, which is meant to boost select uh, SSDs that support this feature to sky high speeds, right? And um, yeah, if you're planning to get this board, expect to pay around 200 euros for it right now. It is a pretty expensive motherboard, I'm not gonna lie here, but it does feature a lot of stuff on it that you would like to see on a decent motherboard. Uh, firstly, the design itself, right? Uh, looks pretty good overall and has a white theme going on for it. Mostly meant for white builds. God, I, I don't know if this is even right to say nowadays, but yeah, I can see it look real good in a white case. And uh, now, as it does come with PCI Express 4.0 uh, support, it does have a small fan on the chipset. Uh, this is something that, you know, AMD has decided it needs now. Uh, I personally hate all sorts of small fans. They, you know, tend to uh, die off uh, or start making horrible noises. And it is almost impossible to find a replacement, right? Uh, also, if it dies quietly, you r never really know if your motherboard is working at a safe temperature or not. Uh, but other than that, um, everything else looks very decent. Uh, there are a load of ports and connectors on the board for all your needs and I did check out the BIOS as well to see what overclocking capabilities it offers and it looked very good here. A ton of features to fiddle around with to find the best frequency for your setup, right? Uh, of course, you can skip all that and just use the pretty amazing ASUS's desktop app, ASUS's AI suit, which can automatically find a very high stable overclock for you. Uh, I really, really suggest you checking that thing out uh, if you uh, have a supported board. Uh, now quickly looking at the I.O. I mean it looks very good, right? There's a total of 7 USB ports with an additional USB Type-C. Uh, we also find an onboard HDMI and display board if you ever need them. And of course the LAN and audio ports. Surprisingly there is also a PS2 board for old keyboards. Mainly if you want to do some serious overclocking under liquid nitrogen or whatnot. Uh, then you can use this port if you have problems with USB. Sadly though, there is no Wi-Fi here. At 280 euro range, I'd really like to see a Wi-Fi built in as well. Yep, even on a desktop PC. For sound, uh, we do get the Crystal Sound 3 chip in here that brings us a very decent audio quality as well. And a quick uh, few things on the board. Uh, there are a total of six SATA boards if anyone nowadays even uses them because, you know, everyone is going M.2 and on this board we do find a total of two M.2 sockets uh, that are of course supported by PCI Express 4.0 to give us up to 64 gigabytes uh, speeds. That is some serious bandwidth. Uh, worth to mention that only one of these sockets are under a heatsink. Uh, for power stages we find a 12 plus 2 design here, so should be totally fine for some decent overclocking. And we also find 8 plus 4 pin power in addition to the regular 24 pin power connector. Overall, I mean, the board is ready to go for some decent overclocking here and um, you shouldn't have any problems with it. Now, I did want to test out how hot the VRMs actually go on the board, but I still don't have a laser heat gun to check the temps right now, so I skipped that. 
for those who want to see it perform against other similar boards out there, well, you have to Google it. Uh, I've overclocked hardware for decades and I really don't see any point nowadays benchmarking motherboards. Uh, it only counts for those 0.5% of people out there that, you know, want the best 3D Mark score, right? And that's about it. Uh, all these boards should be at around 1 to 5 frames per second range of each other, give or take, right? Uh, so benchmarking motherboards nowadays is, in my opinion, completely useless. Uh, if you don't, you know, if you don't pray for, you know, 3D Mark, please give me the most maximum 3D Marks. Like, <laughs> uh, for, you know, regular users, there's no need to benchmark boards other than VRM temps and so stuff like that, right? Uh, so I'm trying to get a heat gun somewhere which wouldn't really cost an arm and a leg, right? Uh, so if I get that done, then I think uh, my motherboard reviews could improve a little bit more, right? Uh, but overall, I'm gonna give the Prime X570 Pro a decent 8 out of 10, a pretty good bang for buck, although I would have loved to see a little bit more features like, you know, for Wi-Fi added, right? Which is nothing really overclocking uh, related, right? Uh, but I still would want to see it at 280 euro range. Uh, plus, I, I don't really like the fans, right? I really want uh, motherboard manufacturers to get rid of uh, fans, make the heatsink a little bit bigger, right? So, I don't know. Some chassis fans could dissipate the heat or, or the video card fan or whatever, right? And um, that's about it. I mean, a little bit nitpick uh, here and there. Uh, maybe the uh, RAM slots and the PC Express slots could be covered in metal, right? It doesn't look really good with this, you know, hold out uh, metal layout. Uh, kind of difficult to, you know, give you the idea, but some manufacturers have done it so clean and nice, it looks so good if there's no, nothing, you know, uh, socketed in, right? Anyway, that's gonna be it for my quick little review, didn't want to go into too depth because, you know, it's a pretty old motherboard uh, already anyway, right? Uh, so no real need for me to, you know, go really deep into it. I did want to do the temperature test though, so I do need to check if I can buy a heat gun really soon. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. I mean, if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer them, right? If you liked the video, hit the like button and um, yeah, I'll be seeing you soon. Ciao for now.